everybody. Uh, so, <clears throat> it has been uh, quite a while since I did my last video, uh, which was how to use dynamic effects uh, to set up uh, conditions um, automatically. In that, I used Minor Quality of Life, a module that helped uh, auto damage. That is the subject of today's video. Uh, one thing I want to point out that since then minor quality of life is, has been replaced by MIDI quality of life um, which I'll be linking here and I'll be changing the description in the previous video to point that out. Minor quality of life is still supported uh, but it is not um, as robust as MIDI quality of life and will not be seeing um, changes or not as many changes going forwards. Uh, MIDI quality of life is built from the ground up uh, to allow more changes that minor quality of life just cannot handle because of the way it is uh, coded, created, all of that. Today we're going to be handling uh, MIDI quality of life, showing how to set that up, and then showing a few fun things we can do with that. So, uh, first thing you want to do when you uh, install it, you want to go ahead and I've been un uh, disabled uh, all of my modules. This is a fresh game world. Um, except for uh, tidy sheets because I am familiar with the sh character sheet um, there's the character sheet you'll be seeing I prefer it is a little bit cleaner looking tidy UI uh, just shows this um, that's all it really does it makes the uh, module section look a bit cleaner it makes most of the, the UI look a bit cleaner I quite like it MIDI quality of life of course um, this is my shared compendium um, I have that so I could easily bring all this stuff over to a new game world without having to create them from scratch but we'll show you um, how the abilities are set up and we'll create a few new abilities with MIDI quality of life in mind to show you um, what do you want to take into account when you're making abilities to work with MIDI quality of life uh, we have easy target because MIDI quality of life requires you to have a character token whatever when you're using an ability on it whether that's healing whether that's just an effect or a damaging spell, whatever, uh, a, an attack, anything that MIDI quality of life you want to affect in roll four, you'll need them targeted. Not selected, so this is selected. This is targeted with the arrows. So normally, if you are a player, you would just double right click, but as a dungeon master, that's not so easy. Um, so I have alt, uh, so easy target rather. Uh, which lets you alt click to uh, do so. All, all, all this does is when you click alt it changes to targeting mode. Um, so that way you don't have to go up here and click that automatically. Uh, and otherwise as a dungeon master you'd have to right click a character token and do that or do this or go up here to this menu. Uh, it's just not, it's not feasible uh, if you want to keep things fast moving. If you're using MIDI quality of life you want to keep things moving fast. You want uh, something, to, you want combat to sm uh, flow a bit smoother, uh, which sometimes, you know, VTTs are great. Um, I almost prefer them to uh, real life because of anxieties. And you know, one thing that just falls away in VTTs is the flowiness of combat because, you know, when you're there in the moment in a real world game, it's a lot easier, it's a lot faster assuming everybody <laughs> is you know on the ball and you know when they are you, you're not in a you're not so much pressured to do that and sometimes in a VTT you can be because you know you don't have that real world interaction so you have to you know um, trade that in for um, that comfortability for for a, a well smooth like a smooth well playing game dynamic effects the subject of our last video I have it because a lot of my abilities in uh, MIDI quality um, setup conditions and while this will not focus on this some of the abilities have them and I will while I'm setting up MIDI quality show you a bit of the thought behind what you're setting up so that dynamic effects works correctly uh, and vice versa. Uh, about time and calendar weather these work in conjunction with one another. About time, uh, 
creates a, an eternal time system in Foundry VTT. Calendar slash weather gives a UI to a um, to the module about time, whereas about time usually doesn't have a UI. This gives a UI, so you don't have to use uh, chat props and command prompts to uh, move time forward, start and stop time. You can easily start, stop time, move time forward, etc., etc. And it's also a lot easier to set up your own uh, time and stuff like that, uh, like your total your own dates and all that and weeks and months it's really great uh, module if you would like to see more on it and more things you can do with it let me know down in the comments uh, with that said ugh, let us uh, get underway so this is my test token um, one thing I don't have is my um, we're just going to do that real quick it is something that uh, I should have done beforehand but I did not um, it is the furnace. Uh, the furnace, among most things, like macros, which I for completely forgot. Some macros do require it. We're not going to cover that today, but do let me know if you want to cover that in a future video. Macros and advanced macros with um, the furnace, uh, and just macros in general, and how also dynamic effects can trigger these macros to create um, for instance, a summoning spell, was, uh, which is something that is uh, very useful. My players like it a lot. A spell that, say, um, like spiritual weapon. Uh, they click it. It summons the token. It lasts for a minute. When a minute's done, either by this or by uh, combat, the token disappears automatically. Keeps a uh, bit tracking uh, easy. So let me know if you want me to cover that in a future video, how to set up summoning and a few other cool macros. Okay, with that set up, uh, the main thing I like Furnace for this instance right here, since we're not using any of those advanced macros, is uh, this little button right here. I highly recommend it for Dungeon Masters. Uh, you could click that and you ignore token vision. So whether or not you have a token selected with it on, you don't see their vision. It's easy because say you're moving stuff around, like okay, I want to move this around, Ugh, I got to do this. It's just not optimal. Okay, so let's get into it proper. Uh, I have used this token uh, for many um, setups. <sighs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to first take a look at something that is already set up. So the weapons in Foundry, most things are already set up to work with Midi Quality right away. What are some things you want to see in mini quality? First, you want uh, the action to be set because this allows it. Without it, you won't see this drop-down menu. So you want to see. You want to. You want to. Um, you know, denote what um, kind of action it, it costs. Uh, if it's a none, you just it's none. Um, activation condition. I don't use it, uh, but you can if you do. Uh, if you want to set up uh, certain conditions that you know set up for you know, what how do they are set up and stuff like that like just a reminder for players like okay if I want to use this the character has to be half health um, but I don't it is no mechanical um, uh, leverage or it has no mechanical use it is just something you can do to help remind so target this is important for midi quality not so much otherwise for midi quality if it targets a creature you want to say that otherwise um, it'll ask you when you try to use it that a um, target has to be set uh, and denoted to denoted to um, plus if it is a um, spell with a say 20 foot radius you oh, oops you also want to have that set um, because this will let you have a drop down um, template uh, which is great uh, templates uh, drop down templates for the spell so when you use it you can place the place the measure template and it will target everything 
in that template so for like a fireball for instance so you don't have to target each one once you set it down you set it down automatically targets everything and rolls for everything all the damage and everything <laughs> a lot of everything's uh, for you uh, but that can all be decided when you're setting up mini quality itself uh, duration is important if you're setting up conditions how long it will last once upon them in conjunction with about time limited uses is obviously useful um, you know if it has charges if it uh, can only be used once a day twice a day whatever uh, resource consum consumption if it is a ranged weapon uses an attribute uh, etc uh, melee weapon attack these uh, ranged weapon attack all these are just amounting to what kind of attack it is what ability modifier uses the attack roll bonus the bludgeoning this is important because this is a damage is going to deal versatile damage is what we'll get into later but um so if something has a if it's a versatile weapon for instance or uh, we'll also go into some niche uses that I use it for uh, and then saving throws and all that that's important because the saving throw that you set up will be the saving throw that mini quality tries to use if it's like a fireball you want to make sure that it's on dexterity spell casting if it's a creature you want a flat one of course uh, but yes let us get into setting up mini quality itself though. Um, let us go ahead and you'll go into configure settings, module settings. Almost all modules can be set up in this way. It's very useful. But we're going to just focus on mini quality. So, uh, first off, um, you want to leave this alone because it's experimental. Um, this just applies the speed, uh, applies the checks before the roll, as it says here. <laughs> um, not super important. I like colored borders. This is something that just affects chat, uh, but I like it because it adds these pretty little borders around. It helps, um, you know, uh, it helps sort of uh, differentiate everybody from everybody. Uh, so if you have multiple players, it'll use the color um, designated to uh, that player. Players control own hidden tokens. Uh, it's currently broken, but uh, in other words, this would have been useful if, for instance, uh, you want to use invisibility, especially in PvP. So when a token is hidden, um, they are not visible to players, uh, usually no matter what. This used to, and is intended to, allow players that own the token, on if it's given permissions uh, in the other permissions tab, if they own it, you know, if they were given owner, uh, they would see that token if it's hidden and can control it. Um, and then enable debugging is useful if um, you're working on something and it just helps. Excuse me. It helps, um, you know, helps if uh, something's being buggy um, or if you're testing something out that is, you know, unchart un uh, charted waters. All of these, um, I usually just leave at um, face value. These are the default, uh, except for fast forward ability rolls. Um, so what this does is when you are taking and you're doing an ability check, uh, it will ask for this without this checked. Um, that's fine, uh, especially if you want to do so. Um, if you want to add bonuses beforehand, if you don't have all your bonuses set up, say, um, you know, via dynamic effects or something. Like if you don't have guiding bolt to give advantage, uh, sorry, not advantage. Uh, that's not that's not a good example. If you don't have um, like things set up so that 
uh, helping a friendly uh, unit or any kind of spell that gives bonuses um, you don't have that set up automatically and you don't want to set that up, that up automatically uh, my last video sort of talks about that a bit um, then you can do the uh, you can leave this so you, you can do it like this a bit easier um, however uh, with this selected let's just save changes here real quick it'll automatically roll it um, just at the baseline but uh, let's say um, you want to give uh, disadvantage you would hold control down if you want to give advantage you'd hold alt down so you don't have to uh, worry about um, never having um, that again uh, having the, uh, the quick ability to do advantage disadvantage etc um, I usually just leave that on because I never really use situational bonuses often uh, because most of my stuff is automated uh, but it does take time and I understand if you want to do that um, but uh, the, the, the chances that, uh, that you're going to be using um, situational bonuses if you have things automated which I recommend if you have the know-how and the extra time um, uh, I would recommend it uh, it just speeds the game up significantly especially for players um, one thing that I will go over if it is requested how to set those things up automatically last uh, time I set up situational bonuses but if you want to set up things like if you want a, a video showing how to set up features like um, uh, life adept for a cleric um, which you know gives them a a bonus uh, I believe it's a plus two bonus on all of their healing uh, I've set that up automatically to work Perfectly, uh, I believe it pulls from their level and uh, possibly their wisba, wisdom, uh, sorry, wisdom uh, modifier. Um, it was a pain, but I set it up, and I can show everybody else how to set that up too, um, if uh, if it's something that's requested. Okay, let's get into the meat of it all. Workflow settings. Yes, there's more than just this. Uh, this is where it really starts to shine. So show item details. You maybe want uh, to do this. This will, in other words, show um, item details when they are displayed in the chat in the chat card. Uh, so, and as it says here, you can use the D&D Five E system setting to auto hide the description, which you will find in configure settings in system settings, uh, which would be. Uh, claps item card in chat. I personally, excuse me, I personally uh, use card only. Um, it's just useful. It gives you a lot of good information when you're playing. Um, merge uh, rolls into one card. This is quite nice. Um, we will enable it for now. Uh, if you're going to be doing this, um, you're going to want this. So what this does is when you're using, um, if you've used minor quality uh, or mini quality without this feature, uh, minor quality didn't have this feature, which is something that is a big improvement over minor quality, uh, just this feature alone. If you used either one, mini quality without this feature enabled and minor quality um, with uh, just in general, uh, you'll notice when you cast a spell, it rolls the um, it rolls the attack, then rolls the damage, or saving throw, then damage. It's just a mess because it just instantly fills up your chat with just a million different rolls. Uh, they're usually bigger ones like this one, taking up a lot of space. Sometimes like both of these combined, uh, that's how big they can get, and it is absolutely a mess. Uh, so you want to have these enabled personally um, and we'll go over what that looks like what the difference is condensed um, it just takes all of the um, stuff um, like uh, it has the two attacks when they're merged together condenses them so uh, it just makes them smaller like the <laughs> description uh, says um, but a little bit more than that, it just looks a bit more pleasing aesthetically. 
So we'll go over that as well. Hide token. So something that um, that a uh, combat utility belt does that works very well, but doesn't um, help when it comes to token names or chat cards. Uh, this does. So, excuse me. You can set unknown creature. I set a unknown creature rather. You could set any name you want to be displayed to players. So instead of uh, ancient black dragon, players would see whatever you put in this. As long as you have chat cards, use token name rather. Um, it's useful. I prefer it uh, uh, when I don't want my players to know about something. And the great thing is, um, if you want to disable it for some creatures, it is totally doable. Uh, there is a, a little icon that appears in the sheet once it's enabled, uh, which is not right now, that uh, you can disable or enable um, hiding of said token and uh, character. So, workflow settings, this is where we really want to um, start paying a good amount of attention. Uh, auto target on template draw. Walls block is a good universal use, I think. So in other words, when a token is drawn, whether by whenever a spell is placed and it does so automatically with a... Um, measure template or when you're just drawing it in general all of these would be targeted um, once these are say once this is saved so in fact we'll even just go ahead and save so we can see what that looks like oh I have to my bad I have to save both settings go back into here and ensure that's enabled Apologize, I have not set this up from scratch in quite some time. Okay, that feature might actually be broken currently. Yes, it's possible that because this is meant to auto target when you're just drawing a template, not just the measure templates. Uh, we'll see when it comes to spells if uh, measure templates are also broken or not. Uh, it's very possible that it is just broken currently because uh, Foundry itself was just updated to 7.5. Uh, but regardless, uh, we'll carry on and I'll show you what it's meant to do. Whenever this was set up, it would show you a um, sort of thing that shows you that these are going to be targeted. It would look like a little bit like this. And then once you placed it down it would automatically target everything in the radius. Yeah, but it seems that uh, not in the cards today. When item is rolled, automatically roll the attack if there is one. This is important. This is pretty much the basis of um, auto damage, auto um, saving throws, auto anything. Um, so we will definitely want this checked if we're going to be automati automating damage uh, and attacks and saving throws and all that good stuff. Hide roll details. Um, you can choose to hide the roll formula. The roll formula plus the sin right, uh, dice, which is dice so nice dice. Um, which I don't use personally. Um, also, you can hide the entire roll. So with roll formula, it would hide the uh, like 3d6 um, and they would just see the outcome. So if you want, if you don't want players to know um, the roll formula of something uh, just because maybe you want to fudge it in the future or just because you want to leave some mystery, some fear, like it's really great when a creature, for instance, uh, rolls 
you know, super low on a crazy ability. And they're like, oh, okay, this isn't something we have to worry about. Next turn, you know, it rolls 100 or something crazy. Uh, it's a great reaction when they don't know the formula exactly. Or you can ins you could just chain hide the entire roll and they'd be like, whoa, I just took 150 damage. Uh, and this is an, this is a good tool if maybe you want to fudge some things, uh, which personally I don't do. Um, so it's very situational for me. With my base players, I don't hide any roll details. Uh, with uh, new players, um, because you never know who's going to be the rule lawyer, uh, the rules lawyer, and that just slows stuff down. When they're like, oh, why is it like this? And most of the time, it's the the rule formula has changed because. You know, I homebrew some stuff. Um, so sometimes I have rule formula um, on hidden. So for right now, we're just going to do that because we couldn't see that anyways unless we had a second player tab open. Auto fast forward attack rolls. Um, or just rolls in general. So uh, what I use and what I recommend is attack and damage. So if you remember uh, this... This again uh, stops that menu pop up from showing up. Uh, just like that, you can use Control and Alt to um, do disadvantage and advantage, uh, respectively. And uh, if you have bonuses already set up, you don't have to worry about set up situational bonuses. Requires targets before uh, to be selected before rolling. You want this selected um, because it helps with the flow. Uh, you also want to um, use check to auto see if a attack is a character. So instead of auto rolling damage, it is going to um, only do so if the attack hits when, with the attack roll. Um, I always do check all see result sometimes only GMC's if we're doing a boss battle or again if I'm playing with unfamiliar players auto roll damage if attack hits um, again always we'll just do as is above uh, stated this just again only rolls it if it attacks uh, whereas this is more or less just seeing if it attacks auto check saves you want yes and this again um, will just be uh, sort of just for privacy settings pretty much who do you want to see again I usually see all see result display saving throw DC is important uh, important if you don't want characters to see um, the saving throw DC search uh, spell description this one's a little bit abstract um, so to explain it a little bit better, um, if a spell, if we just go into my shared compendium for spells, we can go ahead and we can import, imp, excuse me, we can just import a few spells, uh, yes sir. In here, in this is the spell description that they're talking about. If this was a spell that say had a save, well, let's use this one for a better example. Um, it will look at this stuff right here. Half as much damage on a successful one. Um, so mostly, spells will always do half damage. Um, or it'll assume so, especially if unchecked, like the spell says. It'll always do that anyways, but it will look specifically into spell descriptions uh, and will look for keywords. So taking note, so say like some spells um, very rarely uh, take no damage on save. If that is in the spell description, it will automatically um, see this, detect this, and so if somebody fails this uh, if somebody succeeds the save sorry uh, they will take no damage as per the spell description it's a nice one I have it checked most of the time um, I don't think I've ever played with it out it checked 
just because it's never really backfired. It's never really been broken or done anything wonky. It's actually very well made. Um, prompt player to roll saves. Um, I don't do this. Uh, this would just... It just it just bogs things down. I just have it set up that it automatically rolls. So if you have this set up, it will... Um, it can also be worked in conjunction with let me roll that for you. Um, and let me roll for you plus query. Um, and or you can just have a chat message saying, hey, roll this. Uh, I do not use this. If those any of those are checked, they uh, it would make the players roll saves. It would just remind them to do so, which is great. If you want to add that agency for players, I just have it set up so that it will automatically roll for the players. Um, a delay before uh, rolling for players. So if you want to set this up, but maybe you don't want them to take too long, you can set a certain amount of seconds. These are in seconds. Um, if it goes beyond that, uh, the players, it'll automatically roll as before. Um, instead of just uh, waiting forever for them to finally figure out how to roll their saves, as sometimes it takes players to do so. Speaking as both a DM and a player. Um, auto apply damage to target. Yes, plus damage card. So no plus damage card still gives you a damage card, which will look something like this except for the fact that we have the merged uh, rolls, so it won't look like this at all, um, unless you roll just damage. With yes, that will automatically apply that damage roll to the target. Do not worry about uh, damage uh, immunities, vulnerabilities, etc. It will automatically calculate that for you if something has it. It is a godsend. So for instance, this black dragon is immune to acid if it is dealt acid damage it will not take damage no matter what the roll is so you do not have to worry about having damage automatically set up and saying okay I got to reverse this damage uh, because oh you know it wasn't meant to take that damage because oh it's immune or oh it's resistant and if it's resistant it will take half damage as uh, rules um, suggest as long as you have applies immunities enabled in the drop down menu here. Apply immunities plus physical. What does that mean? So this will add an extra uh, damage type and weapon property to, uh, well, weapons. Uh, the weapon property added to weapons that you can toggle is magic. Um, one thing that I have struggled with, uh, I had made custom damage for, this just works automatically out the gate, no need for creating your own custom uh, damage um, module. Uh, this will add uh, immune to physical uh, atta melee attacks, or just uh, non-magical physical attacks, sorry. Uh, and we'll go over that a bit, it is a godsend, it is uh, just, it's just great. Auto apply item effects to targets. Yes, it is uh, specifically for dynamic effects or d dynamic effects, um, <laughs> as it says here. Uh, the the creator, um, as I understand, is not a native English speaker, uh, so you know, give him a little bit of slack. Uh, he does very well. Um, I have talked to him numerous times. I didn't learn all this stuff just by being smart by my by my own, <laughs> I've learned all of this by asking him numerous questions and annoying him at ungodly hours of the night. Um, yes, uh, they are very helpful. Uh, I will absolutely say their name wrong. Wrong. Tisponzi, I believe, is meant to be pronounced. I am not sure. I will link the creator's name in the bottom. He creates. If I am not wrong, which I very well, very well may be, all three modules about time, not calendar weather, uh, dynamic effects, and MIDI quality, and of course minor quality of life. So you probably want uh, apply immunities selected. You also, if you're going to do this, you're probably definitely going to want applies immunities and physical selected. Uh, you're going to want this selected and enable MIDI quality custom sounds 
So uh, this pretty much just uh, lets you create sounds to be used when items are used. So when a weapon is used, a, an item designated as a weapon. Uh, so in other words, if you create an item, you can designate what it is, a weapon, a spell, etc. You can have a um, sound that will, you know, play. So whenever you use it, it will play like, like uh, you can have it, you know, set to a generic spell sound or the sound of a weapon coming out of the sheath or that classic sing sound of a blade singing um, or a potion used. I, in my base game, have the potion sound for from World of Warcraft, for instance. Uh, it's really fun um, and you can get really deep into it, uh, though... I believe Maestro might um, support something more uh, robust, though I've not used it in a while, so I could be wrong. And then you can set sounds for attack rolls, uh, critical hits, and fumbles, so critical fails, uh, ones. And then we're going to save settings. Hopefully that um, answers all your questions. If you have any more specific questions or anything you feel like didn't cover uh, very well, which is always a possibility with me, <laughs> um, just go ahead and leave it in the comments and I will get to you uh, as fast as possible. So, setting up um, spells. First off, let us give test fireball. Oop, he already had fireball. So what we're going to want to do is let's try this on uh, the succubus here. Um, they are resistant to fire. And these guys are also <laughs> resistant to fire. So let's get this guy down here. So we can sort of see what that looks like. We can take a look at their decks to sort of you know, um, say that, yep, yeah, that rolled it correctly, nothing was wrong here. They're probably both going to save because this guy doesn't have a great spell DC. Uh, so it's intelligent. So let's boost his spell save DC by giving him a greater intelligence. Um, and it's going to say that we don't have any spell slots because we don't have any spell slots set up. Uh, so this is great because the spell itself designates that it is a 20 foot um, radius. This is why you're seeing this little template. You can click it down. Okay, so measure templates are still working. Um, and something didn't go right in the... But, okay, so as you could see, it took 64. Uh, the damage was a lot of damage. <laughs> 25 damage. Uh, so they both saved. So they take half damage. And on top of that, the succubi succubus takes half damage. Um, let us go back into configure settings, however, and make sure that this saved because it doesn't seem. Okay. Yeah. You know. So damage was done. All that was done. Yes, merging. Walls block. Hmm. Again, this may be a terrible time to have chose to end this video because a few things. may be broken because it seems that everything is up to date and yet it decided to still show me a roll so basically you don't want to see that. Oh, another thing. Um, these right here, when you're clicking on this, when you're using mid quality, this is talked to as uh, this is talked about and referenced to as a speed roll. 
If you want to use regular rolls, you can use standard rolls. Those aren't the greatest way of done doing that. And you can also just do damage if you want to. Uh, when you use standard, it will always show this. And it is obviously meant to um, with inequality. But for some reason, currently, it is still showing this, which shouldn't be. Um, it will also usually do critical rolls, uh, critical hits automatically, and all that good stuff. So barring the fact that <laughs> some features uh, may currently be broken, we are still going to uh, just show you and break down one last time what you need. You need a target to be designated. Range is not important. It doesn't automatically uh, um, calculate range for you. You're going to, you're still going to have to do that yourself, but it's still a good idea to set this up, obviously. Duration is important if you're using dynamic effects. Damage is important because that is the damage it will use. Saving throws are important if the spell has a saving throw. Level scaling is important if it has scaling uh, because that is the damage it will use. Descriptions being properly set up are important if you have descriptions uh, enabled. Limited uses are important if things have limited uses. Um, some features of mini quality take those into account. One last thing I want to show you before we excuse me before we head off is a cool and useful way I have found to use Toll the Dead. Um, sorry, uh, versatile damage. Giving this token, he already has it. Toll the Dead. What I have done here is I've added the versatile damage, 1d12. This is the damage that um, is used if a target is missing any of their hit points. It cannot be done automatically with MIDI quality or dynamic effects that I am aware of. Knowing how robust this system is, it probably can, because there is a lot of things I haven't touched, like setting up drop-down menus when you cast a spell, like for choosing what kind of damage you want to use, if a la um, chromatic orb, um, chromatic spray can automatically and randomly choose um, the effects to just apply to things. It's crazy. If you want to see those in a future video again, I would be obliged to do so. And hopefully, um, when mini quality is working a bit smoother, uh, probably needs a bit of fixing after 7.5. And maybe whenever I have my <laughs> stuff together and I'm not rambling so much. Versatile damage will always use the formula of your main damage. So what you want to do is you want to shift, click Toll of the Dead if you want to use, okay, well, maybe it has to, okay, well usually, usually you shift click when it is working. It does not seem to be working. Yeah, okay. Well, you can still use versatile damage, but <laughs> let's go over how this is meant to work. How this usually works when things are working correctly. If you hold shift and you click a speed roll, it will roll the... Um, versatile damage for you. Great for when you're using long swords and a player likes to switch things up on them often. It is great for creating uh, spell effects like these that do extra damage under certain conditions. I am so sorry everybody that versat the <laughs> that everything was broken today uh, that I wanted to show you but hopefully you got the gist of it. Um, if you did not I can definitely do a, another video on a day when things are working correctly. 
That said, uh, MIDI quality is still a better alternative to minor quality, which might never get fixed if it also got broken during the 7.5 because I am not sure if he still does updates to it anymore, uh, though he expressed uh, a desire to update it until MIDI quality was completely stable. Uh, which it is, it just, just has certain features that are not stable. And it has not had the extensive testing with other modules um, that minor quality has, but I assure you, if we go into configure settings, sorry, manage modules, that is not a problem. I use a lot, a lot of modules. So, with that out of the way, we are going to end the video here. If you have any questions or any tips uh, about how to make these videos a bit more enjoyable, except for the obvious, ramble less, be more concise, because I am completely aware that I am not good at those two things. That's something you probably just get better at um, by doing videos more, I'm sure, and maybe not having social anxiety. Uh, but I do these because I think that it is something that other VTTs have in abundance videos to help you do things like this. Things that may not be super simple, uh, you know, when you're especially just starting out or just in general. Um, you know, uh, somebody uh, by the and YouTuber by the name of, oh, I believe it is Library of Encounters, Library Encounters does an amazing job at covering the basics and to an extent some modules uh, at least as of late. However, he's not covered these modules, uh, at least not to my knowledge, and these modules are something that is a bit more advanced and something I think that needs to be covered because, you know, um, while they're not super advanced, you know, to somebody who is new to this stuff, who has not had the displeasure of trying to use Roll20 APIs, which you definitely need a video for. It can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, somebody who's new to modules in Foundry who maybe even used IPI APIs might find it overwhelming. Um, so hopefully this alleviates some of that, helps you get started. Um, and again, get MIDI quality. I heartily recommend it. Even though it is slightly broken, it is obviously still doing damage. Um, just some niche things are broken that I usually use. Uh, and you know what? It could completely be my fault. <laughs> it could be also that I'm using Forge, which is a hosting service, which I also recommend um, if you're having trouble hosting. I can cover Forge in a future video, but I believe Library Encounters has already covered it before. Uh, so there's not really any need to cover it um, on my end. Uh, it's sort of just a hosting service that I use, and I do recommend if you're having, again, trouble um, hosting Foundry yourself. It's cheap. It is uh, very useful. You can set up shared compendiums very easily because it lets you make one, whereas in the base game, you have to make those yourself, and let me tell you, they're not fun. I've done it, and they are they are not fun to do. Um, but yes, that will be all for today. Questions, comments, um, feedback, go ahead and post those down below. I will be sure to read as many of them as I can, which is pretty much all of them, because I'm sure I will get no comments. <laughs> um, the description will have links to all of these modules. It will have the name of the creator, the credit, and it will, um, in general, just have uh, a few corrections and some feedback whether or not this, or when this gets fixed, not whether or not, because it certainly will. It's usually fast on working on things. Um, but again, if you have any questions do not hesitate to ask and if you believe uh, you have a good topic for a next video be it a module um, or maybe even something around the basics that you want covered 
though I recommend checking out Library Encounters first. They are uh, incredibly versatile and incredibly uh, in-depth, and their production value is a lot better than mine. Uh, he also doesn't ramble. He probably has a script or just is good at public speaking set up beforehand, which is something I should look into. Um, but again, uh, I'm not doing this for uh, any reason other than to help you out, so if it's a little imperfect, I do apologize. <laughs> I usually wake up one day not having any idea that I'm going to make one of these, just thinking, you know what, more players should use these, or Dungeon Masters should use these, more people should use these great products, uh, they're not even products, they're modules, because you don't buy them, they're free. See, I can't even speak right when it comes to that. Okay, I'm going to stop before I make a complete fool of myself. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you stopped like 10 minutes ago when the lesson stopped because I don't know when to stop the video, obviously. Uh, have a good day, and I'll see you next time.